Pat's Two Cents wishing you happy resurrection. I want to share this with you. Some of you are trying to figure out what's the big deal about resurrection, how it applies to you. Well, let's share in Acts chapter 1. You can read it for yourself. I'm summarizing for the sake of time. In Acts chapter 1, it documents the fact that it was witnessed by many around besides just the disciples that Jesus walked this very earth for 40 days and 40 nights after he died on the cross, laid in the tomb, the stone was rolled away on the third day and he rose from the dead. Well, after that fact, he walked 40 days, and that is historically accounted for. Now, what I want to say to you, what is the big deal that makes him, that sets him apart from the other prophets, so to speak? Well, think about this. The other prophets died. They didn't die for you. They sure didn't die for me. They just died. Correct? When they died, they couldn't take away your sin or mine. Why? Because they were not God the Son. They were not deity. They were just maybe anointed. Some. Some of them, I don't know what they were. Depends upon who you believed in. Now, listen to this. Think about it. Jesus died to destroy the works of sin over our lives. When he resurrected, he gave us power over death, sin, and the grave. Right. Now, how did that power come to us? The power came through the Holy Ghost. How did the Holy Ghost manifest in our lives? Jesus had to die. Think of the Holy Ghost as having Jesus in us. Now, listen to this. He walked the earth. But after he walked the earth, he was taken back up into heaven, announced by the angel, which would be the same way he comes down out of a cloud to get his people. But what I want to say to you is when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, you notice how he did it. These are all little quick summaries. He raised him from the dead. After he had begun to decay, he had laid in that tomb four days. Lazarus was dead. He was deader than dead. We know that. Now, what did Jesus say when he went there? He said, roll away the stone. Take away that stone. I am the resurrection. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Correct? Now. Why did we need a, a savior that could resurrect? Why did we need a savior that could resurrect from the dead? Think of this. Because we were all born in sin and shapen in iniquity. Sin comes natural. Nobody has to teach you the three formulas of lying. It comes without saying. Now. Look at the word decay. Now he made sure that Lazarus was decaying. Some of you in your lives have to show all the signs of decay before Jesus comes into your life. Because once Jesus comes in your heart and you're filled with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost changes your nature. And when he changes your nature, you experience a resurrection. Yes, you do. Listen to this. This is what decay means. And some of you can relate to this right now where you are in your lives. Decay. Rot. How many of you are rotting away? Putrefy. Go bad. Go off. Spoil. Fester. How many of you are festering in your bitterness, your anger, your unforgiveness? Perish. How many of you are perishing? How many of you are deteriorating? 
How many of you are degrading, breaking down? You feel like life has just broken you down. Mm. You feel like you've shriveled. You, you're withering away into nothingness. Mm, mm, mm. You're fragmented. You're disintegrating. You're crumbling. You're dissolving. You're just broken down. Yeah, I felt that way. I used to say when I was unsaved, I feel like the, the, the walking dead. I'm just existing. This ain't life. This is existence. Why did I say that? Because I was full. Here's an oxymoron for you. I was full of emptiness. Hmm. With Jesus Christ, I'm full, baby. I'm full. Yes. Full. Satisfied. Gratified. Fulfilled. Yes, I am. My question to you is how much deterioration has to happen in your life? How much more must you be fragmented? Must you crumble? How, how much more must they break you down before you're willing to come to Jesus so he can put you back together again and make you whole, give you everlasting abundant life give you inner satisfaction self-confidence inner healing wholeness love joy peace fulfillment inner satisfaction how long what are you going to settle for the crumbs of your life how long are you going to put up with being broken down torn to pieces shredded withering, all of that. How long are you going to put up with that? What makes you want to hang on to it in the first place? That's what I want to know. What makes you want to hang on to that? It makes no sense. Not when you have everything you need in one neat little package called J-E-S-U-S. -S. See, that name has power. That's why he's the resurrection. His name has power. He can stop dogs from attacking you. He can get rid of demons that haunt you at night. He can get rid of your fears, get rid of your bitterness, get rid of your rejection, the root of rejection. He can get rid of all your hangups, your insecurities, your fears. He can get rid of the past that drives you batty. So much he can do in your life. But are you willing to open up? Let him into your dungeon. Let him into that filthy cellar of yours that nobody gets to see. And let him come in and clean out your mess. Let him come out and clear out what's been poisoning you to death all these years. When will you turn from death? To life. When? How long must you wait? Hmm. Okay. Now this is what I say to you. Existence. Walking dead. Life ain't even worth living. For some of you it's very dark. You tried cocaine. Now you hooked on it. You tried sex. Now you hooked on it. You tried pornography, now you're hooked on it. You tried cigarettes, now you're hooked on it. You tried alcohol, now you're hooked on it. And it's hooked on you. Mm-hmm. Can never get enough, can you? It's like pouring into a, a, a bottle with a hole at the bottom. No matter how much you pour, more, more, more. How do you like it? How do you like it? No, you don't like it because you got to get more, 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 more. Because it's, there's no gratification there. No satisfaction. Because it doesn't stay. It's fleeting. With every moment, it's fleeting. 
See, no matter what we go through, those of us who walk in Christ, live in Christ, Christ is in us. No matter what we go through, his joy remains. His peace remains. Why? Because he raised us from the living dead. We no longer exist. We live. We live because he lives. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me. He talks with me along life's narrow way. Yes. I'm not in this alone, but you are. When? When are you going to change that? The ball is in your court. Resurrection or death? See, we tried all this stuff, right? Well, my question is, okay, you tried that. Been there, done that, bought the t-shirt. When are you going to try Jesus? You have nothing to lose by trying. If you're willing to try heroin, if you're willing to try cocaine, if you're willing to try, try out that man for size with that, that's hung like a Shetland pony and has a fist the size of a baseball bat, loves beating you up with it. If you're willing to try that heifer that has got her hands all in every pocket of your pants until you run out of money, then she's going to the next good time, Charlie. Why can't you try Jesus, the lover of your soul? My question to you is when? When will you turn to the resurrection and the life?